Daryl uh, Bosso is Deputy Director at Rocha Ghana, uh, and of course Richard Kumado is a Security Consultant. Daryl uh, is Coordinator for the Eco Conscious Citizens, uh, joining us uh, to have an extensive conversation on the President's uh, remarks today. Let me uh, welcome you, uh, gentlemen and lady, to uh, the polls. Uh, let me start off uh, with you, um, Richard Kumado. Of course, uh, this board is on national security. We'll get to the issues of conservation shortly. Uh, but listening to the President, uh, do you feel that he has addressed the agitations? Uh, most especially in the Ashanti region and across the country, uh, numerous people on social media as well who have been uh, making that call to action with the hashtag no to Galamse, at least asking for authorities to deal with this uh, problem of illegal mining. What, what do you sense from the president, uh, having listened to his speech? Uh, Richard Kumara, you'd have to unmute, but, but what do you make of the president's uh, statement today? Uh, and, and as to whether or not it's uh, addressed um, all of the issues. Well, we'll get to Richard um, shortly. Let's bring in uh, Daryl Bosso as well. Daryl, a number of issues the president has talked about. That the fact that he's even calling for a national dialogue um, to, to deal with uh, issues of Galamse on a bipartisan uh, approach. Um, we've heard this countless times. What, what's new for you uh, in what it is that we've heard from the president? Um, good afternoon, President, and thank you for having me. And um, I must say that I struggle to really get any new um, action point from what the president said. I, listening to what the president was saying, I mean, it takes us back to 2017, most of it, and during his investiture where he committed to addressing the menace of Galamse. And then, I mean, we started some action in 2018, there was a ban. So, frankly, I'm struggling Unless maybe coming from the closed door meetings, we are going to see some more uh, pragmatic action to address this uh, menace. But until then, I didn't really get anything new. There are a few points I will want to pick on eventually as discussions continue. But uh, there's nothing new for, for us here. The, the, the president starts off by saying, well, I placed my presidency on the line for this. I've not backtracked on that. I'm still standing by those uh, words, except to say uh, that my approach has not been effective. Basically, my understanding of what it is that the president um, is trying to tell us. And um, so it appears that he has that intent of fighting illegal mining, right? I, I think what we are getting from the president is his admission that the fight against Galamse has failed. Uh, but what I do not get clear also is the fact that the government is willing to really listen. I mean, I've been saying that the government goes around talking about collaboration, working with all stakeholders and all of that. But if you go to the ground in terms of the action eventually deployed to address the Galamse, it is always unilateral, just operating at the level of the presidency and at the ministry with no or little involvement of other stakeholders. I mean, I know very, I'm saying this because if you look at many of the recommendations that came out of the uh, last year, the national small scale mining dialogues, which were organized across the country in all the regions, where we had traditional authorities in attendance with also sector players or featuring, there were several recommendations. A lot of them were mentioned there were several observations of the same issues you talked about today, the lack of uh, participation and involvement of traditional authorities, action to deal with politically exposed persons. All of these things were mentioned. And also another point that was raised was the fact that there was a need for government to ensure that um, the polluters and those who are messing up the environment actually pay for the damage. These are things that should be integrated into the regulation to ensure that not everybody gets up and says, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do mining. But all of this we have not seen being implemented. Again, we have seen a clear point where the president himself is also talking about the fact that um, let's ensure non-partisan approach to also deal with what I'm saying. But if you look at the current issues we are faced with, some of the involvement of the DCs and all of that, as in the case of Alembele and all of that, and even recently, in the case of a contamine, it takes only somebody with a political cover to have that audacity to do what they are doing in a forest reserve in the country. So for me, I feel it is just um, going over the same issues over and over again, but really nothing new for all of us to take home. 
And that's why I'm saying that I am curious to see the actions they are going to come out with after the close of meetings. Until then, I don't see anything um, strong here for all of us to rally behind for the action that is needed to do with Galamse. We need to see a much, much stronger action, and the government should be very clear. I think the process should also be very transparent. For all of us to know what is happening, what commitment he's demanding of the chiefs and also of the MMDCs, so we can all rally behind them and take them on if they fail to act appropriately. But to take the discussion behind closed doors is not in the interest of all of us if you are really calling for collaboration. Uh, let's bring in Richard Kumado. Um, Daryl, just uh, be on with us as well, because he's coming uh, from a security background. This um, issue borders definitely on national security. Uh, Richard, you've listened to the president, and uh, there are scores of Ghanaians on social media um, joining our hashtag, no to Galamse, and making that passionate appeal to authorities to begin to act now. Uh, but, but, I mean, listening to the president, do you see any reassurance uh, that indeed help is underway and that we're closer to ending this uh, fight against illegal mining from a security point of view? Considering the nature of Galamse and the damage it has on the economic security of this country, it poses a national security threat to a large extent. To that extent, you expect leadership. And leadership must come from the president, who is the head and the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Many reports have come from George and from many media stations of military people, involvement in Galamsey, providing cover or directly being involved. I don't see that one coming from the president, and that is where my disappointment is. Uh, what could this trigger? Because uh, this is the same president who says, I put my presidency on the line for this. Now he's calling for um, active participation in this. And, and he's also calling for a departure from the usual political rhetoric on this. Um, do, do you see him bringing the nation together? Uh, are we in, enforcing cohesion going into this fight uh, in the first no, I think it's, I think he's struggling, and that is why he went playing politics again. They have been to Ashanti many, many times. You remember when... David wrote a speech for that and he needs to read and he declined. I think what he should have said is that we've gotten the approach wrong. Let's revise our standards and let's go in and get the results back to where they are. The complexities of political actors and government actors in that matter do not really matter when you have law enforcement officers waiting to hear the commander-in-chief of the Ghana forces give the green light. You see, when it comes to fraud prevention, which I am an expert, but when it comes to security operations, you need authority, you need leadership, and you need an instructive communication from the leader. And that is what we are expecting from our president. Once again, the president failed to deliver on that note. And I think it's unfortunate, but we can still do something about it better. The National House of Chiefs um, is obviously the, phase, uh, the, the first phase of the um, approach the president is adopting post uh, this new era, uh, where of course he's scaling up the fight against uh, illegal mining. Next will be the MMDCEs. And, and when it comes to uh, statecraft, obviously the uh, municipal chief executives and district chief executives obviously uh, count and matter when it comes to the municipal and district security councils. Um, do you feel that this should be uh, a time where the president would tell the MCs in the face that, well, you failed me, and so there should be a cost to it if you don't scale up the fight against illegal mining. Blazer, it will be interesting to know that when it comes to this issue of fighting Galamse, from security intelligence point of view, there are three things involved. Let me remind listeners, when you talk about fight, there are three things involved. You must ask yourself, who are you fighting? What are you fighting for? And in whose interest? The president must answer these questions. And these are the answers the military in particular are waiting for. Then again, when it comes to the chief, the president who represents the state is holding the land and the mineral in trust of the people. To that extent, every decision the president or the mineral commission, which is a state agency, takes on behalf of the people, the chief must be involved. If you listen to Ashanti Hene carefully, he said, the chiefs can't do anything because people come to say to them, we have concession, we have license to go and mine, and the chiefs is left handicapped. Mm. To the extent that there are some few chiefs who want to give us their land, we can understand that. And in but fact, the majority uh, Richard, of these decisions comes from state agencies 
where the president is the head. Uh, and Richard, that's where I want to bring in Daryl Bosa. Um, Daryl, the, the point that the president made about the political cost. Um, he says that in the last election, he's had to pay the price for cracking down on illegal mining. So, well, it's a reality as to whether or not we like it, that the political class will indeed have some hesitations scaling up the fight against illegal mining because uh, it, it feeds into the local economies and um, you don't want to get unpopular in, 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 I mean, when it comes to the grassroots. Well, I, I think um, the president might probably not be understanding what he's saying that he's putting his president on the line really meant because it's, it's, for me, the way I see it is that it's, it means that if we don't succeed with this fight, I step down. And this is something that we're saying because whether you like it or not, it is very hard to determine whether the elections went the way it was because of the fight against Galamse. We should all bear in mind that Ghanaians were already act, act, actively taking action against Galamse before the president took office, even in 2017. We should not pretend that it all started when he took office. So this thing has been on for a long time. The media have been taking very serious action on this. Civil society has been working. So I wouldn't agree that it's because of the fight against Galamse. That's how come he, he had very low, um, I would say, votes in, in, in 2020. So... I think let's move forward. Now, going forward, he is now the president of the country. He didn't lose the election. He won the election. This is where he needs to show leadership and take us forward to addressing the issue. We can't brood over an election that went his way anyway. I wanted to see him say that, okay, because I failed or because I want to make sure this is dealt with, all appointees who are responsible or who are superintending of a galamse in their jurisdiction, I'm going to fire them or I'm going to sack them. This is really taking action and putting the presidency on the line and not talking about an election that he won anyway. So for me, I don't see this case neither here nor there. But the inclusion, you need that, especially from the political class. And you can't do without them. So when the president brings in the aspect of the political cause, it's not as though you're being flippant about it. You need to be realistic here. And that's where, of course, many blame you in the Swiss civil society for pushing and urging the political class on, knowing that there will be definitely a severe cost they will pay at the ballot box. Yeah, but that is what we, we mean by I'm going to put my presidency on the line. You need to take actions that are not going to be palatable to people, but because it's in the interest of all Ghana, take those actions. Now, if you look at Galamse, our water bodies are affected, our farmlands are affected, cocoa, which is an important foreign exchange earner, is also affected. So we are sacrificing all of these for the interest of a few actors just because of election vote. And I think that that is very um, something that we should not be considering at all. I think we need to put the interest of the state, make that paramount, and that should guide every action that we take. So... Has the president taken steps to make sure that his presidency is actually on the line? No. I've not seen any action the president has taken that will let people say that because you did this, we are not voting for you again. That has never happened. So for me, I don't see the point he's raising. Uh, what we need the government, the presidency to do is rather, I think the point he raised about non-partisan um, approach to dealing with the Galamse, where we need to see the government take very stringent action without fear of favor against persons in his political party who are also engaged in Galamse. That is where we then trust him by saying that he's put his presidency on the line. Mm. Otherwise, just referring to the elections and we still having Galamse to deal with it, even when he won the election, is not a good case to make for putting my presidency on the line. Uh, in fact, there's one issue I want to ask all of you. I'll start off with um, Aula Sewa, who's um, coordinator for the Eco Conscious Citizens, also joining uh, this discussion. Aula, the platform the president chose, uh, this is the National House of Chiefs. So the belief is uh, that you have a group of traditional leaders who also have a role to play in the fight against illegal mining. And yet we're all silent about chiefs. At least the last time the criticism came up, uh, the chiefs then point the accusing fingers at the political class. I mean, are the chiefs entirely absolved from any form of blame uh, in this whole conversation regarding uh, the fight against illegal mining?
you would have to you have to yes i can hear you now right can you hear me now yes loud and clear yes good afternoon i have to say that i'm a little confused as to what is going on it's not a key to detect direct if we want to show that we are serious about that we say we need to start holding people responsible we've been told about a company which has destroyed so much of the forest reserve has anybody been prosecuted? It's not the key to are going to do this. So I think we need to show that there's a clear and present danger. We are aware of it. And we are taking serious action. We should start by prosecuting those who are broken the law. It doesn't matter who they are, whether they are associated with the party or not. And that is so all that the presidency has been taken to life. And that we are serious about conversation legal mining. And also the legal mining, the fact that somebody has a license doesn't mean that they are doing what they should be doing. Uh, yes, but but and specific and um, about the chiefs and and what role they can the practical and they, they could be playing right now. Uh, they say that when it comes to uh, I mean giving out the lands, uh, the leases, and um, I mean all forms of documentation, it's all done uh, at the at the center in Accra. So you only show us proof that indeed you have the clearance to come into our lands. And beyond that, the chief would not have any other political will or might to fight that. But for the chief can be a bit of a red head. Whether or not you know about, whether or not somebody has a legal right to be there, nobody has a right to destroy the environment. So yes, the chief can use the authority to get the people who are destroying the land to be removed. But they can't go as far as the state machinery can go. You know the access. You know they are destroying the environment. Whether or not the chiefs are playing their role, it doesn't stop you from playing your role. I'm a little confused about this situation. Uh, so what you're seeking to say is that all of the attention should be on the, on the politicians? No, I'm saying everybody has a role to play. The Minerals Commission has a role to play. The Forestry Commission has a role to play. The persons um, in the area have a role to play. The chiefs have a role to play. But currently, there's a clear and present danger. We are aware of the access. Arrest those who are breaking the law and prosecute them and let the law apply. Those who send a message that we are not just interested in consultations and conversations. But we are interested in dealing with the problem. We heard about a company that has destroyed the environment. Whether the chief would have done something or not is neither here nor there. They have done this. What action is being taken? There was another case where somebody closely connected to the ruling party had an excavator burn. But was anybody arrested and prosecuted? Unless we start prosecuting those involved, the seriousness will not be seen. Uh, Richard, uh, what's your take on the issue about the chief? Richard Kumar, if you're with, with us, I'm, I'm just asking about your take on, on, on the issue about the chiefs. No, I'm saying that the chiefs are key actors in this particular case because they are the custodians of the land. But let me be quickly to say that the president and the actors who work around the president have no assets and they are not acting in the greater interest of the state. And to that extent, the national security issues such as Galamse, we are playing politics with this. We never meant to stop it. We never meant to prevent it. All it takes is to hold workshops and to talk about it. Because from what Madam Abula is saying, ask yourself, no punishable of offenses rationalizes bad behavior. And we know those who are involved in Galamse. We don't need a soothsayer, a prophet to tell us. Let's wake up and do something about it because it's a major, major, major security threat to our, our nation. How do we incorporate not just the chiefs but all other actors into this uh, to, to bring um, some, some momentum onto this, this whole movement against illegal uh, mining? I agree largely with what Madam Awula said. The president must act. The law courts must act. You remember the minerals act, the president of the 19th of August. Uh, change it to amended the act to 999, 995. If you look at the punitive actions and the punishment, the prosecuting rules of the Mineral Commission and all those involved, 
we have a beautiful art on our hands. Once we refuse to punish people because we prefer politics to governance, and we use the money from Galamte to finance political party activities, we'll be doing a window dressing. And brothers, I can tell you, and I can bet my life on it, that is where the action is. And that is why the politicians don't want to fight it, and they are deceiving everybody by many of these workshops. Darrell, for you, the chiefs, do they really matter? Yes, they do. The chiefs do matter a lot. I mean, I recall when government wanted to pass this committee mining, there were several prominent chiefs across the country who said no. The government still went ahead and passed the framework for community mining. And so if the government says they want collaboration, they should really indeed ensure that they listen to what people are saying. As per the regime for getting mining licenses and concessions, you, of course, I mean, start your process at the Minerals Commission. You are even required to go to the ground and seek consent. That's usually done through an EIA process. And many times where committees even resist and decide that they do not want it. I've seen instances where the police have been used to force some of these activities on them. The case of committee mining, several committees in the Eastern region rejected it, but they were forced eventually to take the committee mining. So the question is, is the government really serious about working with stakeholders to address this issue. So it's one thing saying the chiefs have power and authority, but not respecting that power and authority. And we need to see the government really do that. Otherwise, it's just a matter of just calling them to waste their time, and then we don't see any channel. And also, the government will go and do what they say they will do anyway. And so we don't see any reaction happening eventually, which is unfortunate. Uh, subsequently, the president uh, will be meeting the MMDCEs. They play a crucial role, to you agree? Oh, they do because they are in charge of various decentralized um, districts across the country. They, they also sit as chairperson for the district um, security um, committees that are there. And if anything will happen in a district, these people do not miss it. So if these people are the leaders at the decentralized level and they are sitting while these things happen, then they really have a bigger responsibility to ensure that Galamse is addressed at their level. If we can start addressing Galamse at the decentralized level, it will already it would it reflect eventually on a success at the national level. So if we get it wrong at the decentralized level, we are never going to be successful. So I'm keen to hear the commitment and the charge the president is going to put before these MMDCEs, because I think there should be an accounting for all the work that they are doing so far. So that if you have mind, I think there was even a time where it was indicated by the presidency that it's going to be a requirement that every DCE should have an outcome to, to get um, Galamse out of the various um, districts and, and, and assemblies. But we have not seen that happen or we've not seen the government try to implement that principle or I should say that, that rule they wanted to enforce some years back. So I want to see what comes out of this meeting and what will be new this time. Mm. Uh, finally, for you, Awula, where do we go from there? As has been said, is there really a will to put an end to Galamse? I think not. We have had endless meetings upon meetings. For heaven's sake, we know who the players are. Let's deal with them. Let's see some high profile prosecutions and say, send a clear message that we want to end Galamse. We don't care who is involved. That is what putting your presidency on the line to the house. Otherwise, it's like an acting deception. I'm sorry to use those words. We are not convinced that there's any serious attempt to end calamity. And we are all being slowly poisoned in our environment is wrong. Anyway. Uh, thank you all for your time. I will ask our uh, coordinator for uh, Eco Conscious Citizens, uh, Daryl Boso, is uh, Deputy uh, Director at Arocha. Uh, Arocha uh, and uh, we also do have uh, Richard Kumado, who is a security consultant, joining us uh, on this um, conversation. Thank you all for your time. Uh,